Welcome to the Dairy News and Views podcast, a production of the Iowa State University Extension and Outreach Dairy Team. Our podcast covers current educational, research, and industry tools available for your operation to manage healthy cows and calves while producing the highest quality dairy products. Thanks for joining us today on Dairy News and Views from the Iowa State University Dairy Team. I'm Fred Hall, Northwest Iowa Dairy Field Specialist, and I'm here with Jen Bentley, the Northeast Iowa Dairy Specialist, as we facilitate today's episode. Thanks for joining in today, Jen. Well, it's great to be here again, Fred, and you know, we're just trying to stay cool this week, and I think that's kind of why we have invited Brian Doherty back to our podcast again. Uh, Brian is our ISU Extension Ag Engineering Field Specialist. You know, a few weeks ago, we had him on talking about heat abatement strategies and very hopeful that many of our producers are utilizing those management practices right now, you know, as we're experiencing some very mid-90s temperatures that are going to be kind of extended here. So, Brian, welcome back to our podcast. Yeah, thanks for having me back on the podcast. It's uh, good to be back to chat with you. Yeah, so as we talk about, you know, heat abatement strategies, what else should our producers be watching out for in their barns during these hot days? Yeah, it's a great question. One of the things that I've seen in a few barns recently and it's fairly common during what we call the dog days of summer that we're in now are cattle wanting to bunch up in, in large groups in one area of the barn. Now, this seems like rather odd behavior to us because, you know, when those cows bunch up, they're close together and they can make themselves even hotter and more uncomfortable and cause more heat stress. Yeah, that's interesting. And actually, you know, I've gotten a few calls on that cow on cattle bunching in freestyle barns. So why do cattle bunch together like that? So this is a, it's an interesting question. And the answer to that isn't always straightforward. The simple answer is that you know, bunching is a, it's a natural response to stress. You know, stressful conditions, they can result in a herding instinct, and that causes those cattle to group together, you know, even though that resulting bunching may actually be in a less comfortable area of the barn and can often further increase levels of stress, as I mentioned. So naturally, when this happens, we want to try to do something about it. But, you know, trying to spread that group back apart again, it's likely to fail and more times than not, you're just causing additional stress to those animals and their caretakers. I've talked to several producers that have tried to disperse the group, and really it's, it hasn't worked, and they just end up, you know, wanting to kind of pull their hair out in frustration because the cows, you know, short time later just bunch up again. So really the only way to solve this is to figure out the underlying issue that's causing that stress and then address that in order to present that Uh, prevent that bunching. Assessing those causes of bunching, it starts with observing the cattle and just kind of ask yourself a series of questions like, you know, when does that bunching occur? Where does it occur? Is there a noticeable timing or location pattern to the bunching? And once you have a kind of a general sense of the behavior that's happening, then you can kind of look at some more specific things, specific questions that help kind of narrow down the cause and hopefully point towards some solutions. Is there anything specific that contributes to stress and causes cattle to bunch up? Yes, there are several specific issues that we can look at. So bunching is thought to be caused by one or more of four interrelated issues, and that's heat stress, lack of fresh air, flies, and biting flies in particular, and then light avoidance. So what we need to do is determine which of those or which combination of those are causing the problem and then try to implement some strategies to prevent or at least minimize the bunching. Now that sounds simple but I bet it's not that easy. What can producers do to prevent bunching? So I'll kind of go through those those separate issues one at a time. So I'll talk about heat stress first. Um, we've already covered a lot of this in you know the podcast that Jen mentioned on heat stress and ventilation maintenance a few weeks back. So if any of the listeners missed that, I encourage you to go back and have a listen. You know we go into a lot of detail on you know what you can do for your ventilation system. But if you think your cows are bunching more as the temperature or temperature humidity index increases, and then they disperse again once that temperature drops back below a certain point, then heat stress is pretty likely to be playing a role in that bunching behavior. So in order to address that, 
the first thing I would look at is air speed in the barn. So we want to shoot for at least 2.25 mile per hour air speed. And again, that's a minimum in the stall resting area. And then in the holding area, we want about a thousand cubic feet per minute of airflow per cow in the holding area. If you've got a mechanically ventilated barn, you can check your inlet air speed. We want that to be somewhere between, you know, 5.7 to 9 miles an hour coming into the barn. And you want to take measurements at several different locations, try to identify any dead spots or areas of poor airflow. You know, you'll typically find those around crossover alleys, divider walls, and any other obstructions in the barn. The other thing is just to, again, to follow up on the last podcast, make sure your fan maintenance is up to snuff. Dirty fans can lose up to 40% of their airflow capacity. And, you know, loose belts is another common problem I see. So make sure your, your fans are clean, your maintenance is done on those fans. If you've got a curtain-sided barn, you know, we like to see at least half of the sidewall area open on both sides of the barn. So you're probably wondering, you know, how you make these measurements. So you can measure air speed, temperature, humidity, things like that with some handheld devices. You know, they start at around $150. So Kestrel is one company that's very popular. So if you just do a web search for Kestrel meters, you can find these. You know, another handy thing to have is a smokestick or a fogger. You know, you can use those to check airflow patterns and to detect dead spots in the barn. So, you know, a lot of people don't have this equipment, maybe don't want to purchase it. So you can always check with your local extension service, check with your veterinarian, you know, your ag business professionals, nutritionists, people like that, you know, and to see if they they might have some of these devices that they can come out or they can borrow you or can provide assistance. But if you think you have, you know, good airspeed and it's evenly distributed in the barn, that's that's another important point. You know, and the cows are still showing signs of heat stress. The next thing I would look at is adding sprinklers, you know, or making sure your sprinklers are working the way they should. Cheapest and the easiest place to put those sprinklers is in the holding area. So it's a smaller area, but you never want to add sprinklers in the holding area unless you also have fans there because you're creating a very humid environment. And that increase in temperature humidity index can end up causing some pretty severe heat stress in that holding area if you don't have those fans. You can also add fans and sprinklers along the feed alley for extra cooling. Sprinklers are more effective when you combine them with fans because, you know, the air velocity increases the rate of evaporation off of the cow. So the cooling effect, you want to remember from sprinklers, comes from letting that water evaporate off the cow. So just remember that, you know, continuously wetting those cows is counterproductive. Those sprinklers need to be on a timer system, you know, where they're turning on and off. And you want to also provide a large droplet size to make sure that the cows are getting wetted through to the skin. And then in any kind of system, you know, just don't forget that access to plenty of clean, fresh water in multiple locations is really a must in this hot weather. You've given us some good recommendations for heat stress, but how does lack of fresh air fit into the picture? So lack of fresh air, you know, can also cause stress on animals and it's directly linked to poor ventilation. So a lot of the things I just talked about with checking your air speed in the barn, you know, strategies for improving ventilation, they'll also help bring fresh air into the barn. You know, just keep in mind that, you know, when we talk about ventilation, you know, we're talking about bringing fresh air in. You know, you need to make sure your ventilation system is doing that and not just recirculating hot, humid, stale air. It's already in the barn. So if you just observe your cows, you know, ask yourself, you know, are they bunching up more on days where your wind speed is slower? You know, in a mechanically ventilated barn, are they bunching near the fresh air inlets? You know, if you're seeing that type of behavior, then, you know, lack of fresh air could be a contributing factor to the bunching. Brian, you also mentioned flies that can cause cow bunching. Yeah, that's a good question. So flies are another very common culprit with bunching. So what you can do is observe the cattle behavior, you know, and that can help determine which type of flies are potentially causing the problem. That can help you figure out what strategies might work better for addressing that. So there's several different types of flies that might be present in the barn. Stable flies, you know, they prefer kind of the legs and bellies on the cattle and they can deliver a very painful bite. So a common thing you'll see if it's stable flies is, you know, the cows will be stomping their feet a lot, trying to get them off their legs. So you can watch for that. 
Um, horse flies and deer flies are another possibility, maybe not as common. You know, they're much larger than stable flies. But they can also cause a painful bite. You know, you typically will see those more around like natural water sources. So if you're close to a river or, you know, maybe a stream or a wetland or something, it tends to attract a lot of those flies because that's where they, they reproduce. But you'll typically find them on the backs, necks, and sides of cattle. Corn flies are another possibility. They generally spend most of their time on the cattle. You know, if you see a small cloud of flies kind of hovering around their, their back and shoulders, you know, that's a good indication of corn flies. Cattle kind of throw their heads over their shoulders. They throw feet on their backs. You know, that's a very common symptom with horn flies. And then face flies, you know, the name kind of implies that they, they congregate around the head area. But they don't actually bite, you know, they just feed on secretions from the eyes and the nostrils or any open wounds, but they only stay on cattle for a pretty short period of time generally. So if you see the cows flapping their ears, shaking their heads from side to side, that's an indication of face flies. So, you know, all those flies kind of biting and swarming around the cattle, they can cause stress, cause them to bunch up, you know, trying to get away from the flies. It's kind of a natural herding instinct. And it actually, you know, it makes sense from the, the cattle perspective because the cows in the center of that bunch are actually somewhat protected, you know, from those flies. And so it makes sense for the cows to bunch up in that situation. So just watch those behaviors, you know, and see if your cows are displaying any of those fly avoidance behaviors, you're going to want to take some steps to try to reduce that fly population. So kind of two different parts to that. The first is you want to try to eliminate any breeding areas for those flies. That's, you know, can be a cheap and effective control method. You know, fresh manure and piles of, you know, moist or decaying feed are very common areas where flies lay eggs. So you want to try to remove any vegetation from around the barn. You know, keep wet and foiled feed, uh, feed cleaned up and keep it away from the barn. Fill in any areas where you tend to have water ponding in the yards. You know, just maintain a general cleanliness around the facility can help reduce those breeding areas. So then the second step, you know, is insecticidal control and things like that. So you can hire a pest control company to come in and do premises spraying. That can help. You can do direct fly sprays on, on the cows. You can do pour on insecticides, you know, infeed, you know, chitin inhibitors can also help. But just make sure you always check the label for any restrictions before you use you know, any of these insecticide or other fly control products. Yeah, those are, those are very good points, Brian. And if I was walking through kind of your checklist here, and let's say I feel like I have good ventilation in the barn and I have my flies under control, and yet my cows are still bunching, what else could be causing it? Yeah, and that can happen. So I've been on some farms where, you know, taking airspeed measurements, you know, ventilation seems good, flies are under control, but the cows are still bunching up. So one other thing you can look at or something that can happen is light avoidance. You want to keep in mind cows, you know, bright light by itself won't cause cattle to bunch. If you think about, you know, cooler conditions, wintertime, cattle typically don't bunch up. So there's something else going on there besides just the lighting. So the light avoidance, it's more of a, a secondary response to other stressors. You know, the theory is that cattle equate, you know, light with hot. It's kind of a natural grazing instinct. If you think about cattle on pasture in a hot day, you know, they go find a tree somewhere where they can get into the shade. So they're, they're trying to find a darker area just as an instinct. So, you know, when cows are stressed, they'll seek out areas in the barn that, you know, have either faster air movement and or a darker part of the barn, even if that area is actually less comfortable. So just look at your cows when they're bunching up. Look at the lighting distribution through the barn. You know, ask yourself, are some areas darker than others? Are the cows bunching in those darkened areas? You know, and also you can look after sundown. If there's a lot of heat stress, you know, they might even still bunch up during the later part of the day before your, your lights have turned off. So that's something else you can look at. And so just kind of, you know, take a look at those things. That can help determine if, you know, light avoidance is part of the issue. So, you know, if you've already you've got good heat abatement strategies, good fly control. The next thing you can do if you think they're, they're bunching in darker areas is try to limit the variability 
in light intensity throughout the barn. So you want it to be very evenly distributed. So if they're bunching in dark areas during the day, um, one thing you can do is try closing the curtains on the brighter side of the barn. You know, you start from the top and work your way down just to try to, you know, even out the, the light variability throughout the barn. You can also use shade cloths to cover, you know, a brighter side of the barn. They can kind of roll down from the top or you can just, you know, buy shade cloths that you kind of stretch out and you stake them into the ground. If you do that, you might, you want to try to angle that away from the barn a little bit on the bottom or leave a little bit of a gap in the bottom so you don't block your airflow. And, you know, you might want to recheck your air speeds again afterwards. You might have to add some more fans just to make sure you still have good air speed in that case. The other approach you can take rather than trying to make the barn darker is if you've just got certain areas that, that are darker, you can try adding some lighting in those areas. You know, again, just trying to even out the light distribution, and that that might actually be a cheaper option, and it has worked in some situations. It doesn't always work. Um, if they're if you think they're still bunching after sundown, they're still seeking out those darker areas. You know, just make sure if you've got extended day lighting, clean up your light fixtures. You know, you might have to add some more lights. You know, in those darker areas, because you want a very you know even distribution of that light throughout the barn. You know, with your artificial lighting. Brian, thanks for the information you shared here today. As we conclude, do you have any other recommendations or are there other resources available for producers as they tackle cow bunching problems? I recently wrote a, a short publication on this, so I believe that's going to be available on the uh, ISU Extension Dairy Team website. You know, you can find that at extension.iastate.edu forward slash dairy team. Um, another great resource is the uh, University of Wisconsin Dairyland Initiative. You know, they've got, you know, a lot of good information on heat stress abase, abatement, things like that. You know, if you just uh, do a web search for Dairyland Initiative, you should be able to find that. They have a housing module that you can go through. It's got a lot of good information. Um, you can always reach out to, you know, an extension dairy specialist or one somebody on the ag engineering team. If you've tried some of this and you're still having problems, you know, we might be able to help you with some troubleshooting. You know, if you're in eastern Iowa, I'm happy to do farm visits. You can reach me at 563-583-6496, extension 125, or by email at brian1 at iastate.edu. That's B-R-I-A-N-1, the number one at iastate.edu. Brian, Jen, I want to thank you both for being on the show here today. You've given us many good management tips to think about and implement as we move into warmer weather and try to deal with cow bunching in our dairy facilities. To the listeners, thanks for joining us today and look forward to visiting with you on the next Dairy News and Views from ISU. This institution is an equal opportunity provider. For the full non-discrimination statement or combination inquiries, go to www.extension.iastate.edu backslash diversity backslash ext.